They're both small brown spiders that like to hide underneath stuff during the day. So it's pretty easy to get them confused. I wanna come off the bat here and say that both of these spiders are venomous. But of course, you know, as, as someone who's working on becoming a wildlife expert, I wanna give you the best information you could possibly find about these spiders. So let's actually get a little bit deeper into the types of venoms these animals have and whether you should actually be concerned if either of these spiders are in your house. So this is a spider that science considers to be medically significant. What that means is you take a bite from this guy, it's probably safer to go seek medical attention just because it could get bad. But with the brown recluse, is that actually true? See, we hear about these cases of people having their arms rot off from a brown recluse bite, but science is actually not totally sure if the venom itself is the cause of this. They're not sure if it's due to secondary infections that come after the bite. And a lot of times, really bad necrotic incidents are actually misdiagnosed. A, good, a very shrewd commenter let me know uh, on my brown recluse video that a good portion of those necrotic brown recluse bites might actually be poison ivy gone bad, allergic reactions to something else, or a cut or a bite from something completely different that got some really nasty bacteria in it and then went necrotic. I don't like to get, I don't like to say that an animal that could be medically significant isn't actually that dangerous because I don't want people going out and getting bit by this thing, you know, legal reasons and all. I don't want to get sued. I'm broken up as it is. But the thing is, with the brown recluse, it's actually kind of inconclusive if a bite from this spider will actually kill you. Now what about the wolf spider? Specifically, this is the rabid wolf spider that gets a lot of a bad rep. Its name is a little bit scary, having that rabid in its name. And I grew up hearing a story that the rabid wolf spider was the most deadly spider on the planet. If it bit you, your arm would rot off and you'd die if you didn't have an amputation. Because the, apparently the venom would just keep eating away at your body until you were just mush or something. Obviously, I now know that's not true. But the thing is, is wolf spider venom actually bad for you? Well, any spider venom can be bad for you if you're allergic. You know, everyone's body is gonna react a little bit differently to a bite or a sting from anything that has a venom. Let's just assume the recluse is deadly and you should be concerned. How do you tell these spiders apart? They're both little tan spiders that like to hide underneath stuff. How do you tell if it's a brown recluse or a wolf spider? Here's the thing. If you've got a brown recluse, it's gonna look very distinct. A brown recluse is gonna be a lot more spindly in appearance. They have these longer, spindlier legs they hold splayed out. Brown recluses are really skinny, small spiders. One of their key features is they're gonna have a dark patch on their thorax leading up to their eyes. It looks almost like a violin shape. So there's plenty of other spiders that have a violin shape on them. But if you've got a tan spider with a violin shape and you're brave enough to get close enough to see the eyes, Brown recluses will have six eyes. Most spiders have eight, recluses only have six. Wolf spiders, especially the rabid wolf spider, are gonna have varying shades of brown. And generally, they're gonna have pretty distinct stripes on them. Rabidosa is gonna have distinct dark brown stripes on its back that help it blend in in the grassy and pine needly environments that it calls home. They're also gonna be a lot bigger. The biggest brown recluse I've ever seen is tiny compared to the medium-sized rabid wolf spiders that I've seen. They can get probably three, three and a half inches in leg span, and their legs get thick, thick and meaty, because these guys are built for speed. Little spindly legs aren't gonna help these wolf spiders charge across the ground when they're hunting for prey. They have these big, meaty legs, almost closer to a, to a tarantula build than a cellar spider. The reason they're so big and powerful is they are ground dwelling hunters that use their speed and eyesight. You know, a wolf spider is not gonna have six eyes, it's gonna have eight eyes with two very large eyes in the front. They have incredible vision. These guys are nomadic hunters. They generally don't build webs, uh, except for a few really weird species. Recluse is a little bit different. Their name recluse is because these guys love to hide. You know, during the daytime, they're gonna be living underneath all kinds of debris. Uh, in fact, where the wolf spider is groundling, a brown recluse is actually kind of arboreal. They'd be living on a dead tree or a snag, something like this, usually in between the bark and the actual wood. 
And as a matter of fact, uh, one of the things that you wanna be really careful around if you live in a brown recluses range is cardboard. Cardboard is a lot like tree bark. You wanna be really careful if you're moving cardboard in an area where brown recluses live. That's another thing. Because they're, semi, they're sort of arboreal, recluses are usually found kind of on the lower end of walls. You'll find them in like shadowy areas in the corner of your house or corner of your basement or something, uh, just hanging out on the bottom of a wall. Generally speaking, a wolf spider isn't gonna go on the wall, so if you found a violin marked tan little spindly spider, it might be a brown recluse if it's hanging out on the wall. Bottom line is, should you be concerned? You know, animals in nature, they've all evolved different techniques to help them survive. Spiders use their venom to both subdue prey and defend themselves against predators. If you live in an area where any spiders live, if you know their behavior, you can pretty much avoid taking a bite ever by either adapting your house to not have lots of junk on the floor um, where spiders could hide, or knowing how to be careful in areas where spiders would be hiding. So if you live in an area where brown recluses or black widows might live, you might wanna be extra careful if you're moving debris. If you're moving junk in your house, flipping boards or something, um, even just doing construction work or stuff like that, never stick your fingers where you cannot see when you're moving something, trash, debris, whatever. Um, clothes that are laying on the floor for a couple days. In an area where brown recluses live, carefully pick it up and shake it out before you put it on. You know, if you lived in bear country, you wouldn't leave food or trash lying around that would attract bears, right? Um, you adapt your behavior so that you don't have to have negative interactions with the local wildlife. I'm a lover of all these creepy crawly things. You know, it's why I'm down here in Louisiana. It's what I've been, I've been learning to improve my skills working with uh, venomous and non-venomous snakes. Now that I've kind of leveled up my skills, me and Zach are actually gonna be going after some of the rare and elusive gems of Louisiana. Some of the strangest and craziest wildlife you've ever seen. We're going after it. Now, if you like this video and wanna learn more about the brown recluse and whether or not it's aggressive to humans, I got a video right here where I did an experiment to see just that. And then if you wanna know about, more about wolf spider venom, I actually did an experiment with human blood. I added wolf spider venom to human blood to see what would happen. And that video is right here. I hope to see you there, but until then, don't forget to get out there and find your adventure.